Hi, Scott from Digital Fish with content that catches. I was on a trip to Great Barrier Island targeting kingfish, snapper and hapuka with a kuma fishing tackle and the boys from Smart Marine. Day 2 started with a fancy bacon and egg croissant while watching the sunrise before heading out to chase some kingfish. We were straight into the action after spotting a school on the sounder and it wasn't long before Max Sheehan hooked up and started playing a feisty little kingfish. This fish stayed attached all the way to the top but in true kingfish style tried to tangle the lines and escape but Max got him over the side and released him to fight another day. Not everyone was fishing knife jigs. A Savage Gear slow jig was deployed on light line to see what the kingfish thought and it got smashed just off the bottom. Chris Vindris was on the other end and patiently played the king out. Light gear is always a bit risky when several people are hooked up. Crossed lines usually means that the light line loses. This kingfish wasn't so lucky, but was a tad on the small side. The morning was full of action with multiple species hooked, landed and lost amongst the crew. Josh Shiphorst was playing what looked like his second decent kingfish until the fish decided it didn't like him very much and powered off for Samoa. Josh ain't the sort of guy who loses many arm wrestles, so my money was on Josh. At least for the first 30 minutes without a harness. The mystery fish had us guessing. Shark, or maybe, just maybe, a black marlin. Down deep we could see a sharky shape materialise and eventually a big bronze whaler started to succumb to the pressure. Bronze whalers are quite amazing creatures and we were eager to release it as soon as possible. Large fish beside the boat demand a lot of respect and so we were taking it easy but the shark had a different plan and after getting its head down, powered off for round two. Josh took a rest after handing the rod to Bryn Fowley for a turn on the bronzy. More grunting, huffing and puffing eventually had the shark back beside the boat and we could see the shark had two jigs in its jaws. Whether the shark had gone for the jigs or the kingfish on the jigs we didn't know but we wanted them back and a safe release for Mr Big. We decided to give the kings a rest and so cruised off to see if we could find some crayfish and some snapper closer to the coast. Skipper of Tor Fishing Charters, Jake Brebner, headed for one of his snapper spots to see what was hanging around and we drifted some baits out the back. Local barrier fish were present, but a moray and small snapper was about it, so we headed to another location where Stu was going to suit up and have another crack at the crayfish. Johnny Pierce found something a bit bigger than the panties we had been catching and pulled up the second biggest snapper for the two day trip. Stu's catch bag had some bulges in it and a couple of nice pack horse and red crayfish were pulled out for the cameras. A quick measure and several tasty crustaceans were iced for later. Josh had recovered enough to fire up the grill for lunch and steak sliders were scoffed down before we started to pack up the show and head for home. An awesome trip with fish aplenty. Thanks again to Tor Charters, Akuma Tackle and the Smart Marine crew for a great trip. This is Scott from Digital Fish.